Magic Q version 197 stable has now been released with over 24 brand new features and over 125 enhancements to existing features in the software. You can download this now for free from the Camsys website for all current Camsys consoles and PC systems and of course find the full change notes online. We're going to take a look here at some of the highlights in this version and some of the features the highlights uh, in the release. So take a look here on my PC. Uh, one of them being that we now have a direct integration with the QSYS software. You can see here I'm running the QSYS designer. You'll find on the download page on the Camsys website our QSYS plugin. It's our own QSYS plugin we've written. It works natively with the QSYS software. All you need to do is download that plugin, load it into the QSYS designer, and it allows me to do things like control of my playback. So you can see I'm controlling playback one here from the QSYS software. Uh, so I have control from the QSYS software directly with our plugin. I haven't got to go and look up the UDP commands or anything and manually put them into the software. Uh, we have control of things like the playbacks for level. You can see it's not just turning them on, I'm setting the level. You can see uh, the percentage here. Uh, we have control of our playbacks, uh, our stacks, uh, and our executes with the plugin as well. Um, so you can find that, as I say, uh, directly on the Campus website. It does use UDP commands, but again, you don't have to actually look up those commands. Um, you do need to be out of demo mode if you're on a PC system, and of course, it will work natively uh, with our MagicQ console. So ideally paired with things like our, our MagicQ Rack or our MagicQ DIN products. Um, we've also got uh, some great new features in the software itself. Um, if I go and open up my visualizer here and overlay the viz on top here, I'm just running our standard survey demo show. Actually, we did um, enhance that. We've given it a couple of little updates for this release as well. Um, one, one of the things we've added now in software is our new framing shutters control window. I've got some profiles here. So if I've got moving lights with framing shutters uh, and I just bring them on and locate them and I go to position and tilt them onto the back wall like so, uh, you'll find inside the beam window here, there's a new window called view blades. And this gives me now visual control of framing shutters inside our moving lights. Uh, so I can now uh, go and grab the framing shutters of the fixed. You can see in my visualizer it's updating there. Uh, controls I've got, uh, the individual shutters, and it will work with both framing types. It works uh, whether I've got the uh, in and swivel type framing blades or the two corner stone type uh, framing shutters across my four blades. Um, you don't need to know which system it is. We add that information into our head file and it will just work for you. The control is exactly the same. Uh, inside the window here, of course, I've got control of the four blades where I can bring them in and out and I can rotate and swivel them like so. Uh, if I rotate uh, this blade around like that, make a sort of V shape there. Uh, with a blue arrow here, I have control to rotate the gate inside the profile fixture itself and it supports it. Uh, and if I grab the blue ring around the outside, it allows me to rotate the window itself. So, for example, if I had uh, this shape on my frame with shutters, if I flip the tilt on my moving lights, um, I can rotate the window here to match the view that I've actually got in reality with my fixtures. There are a couple of different views in this window. If I go to page two, it changes my encoder control. So rather than giving me the uh, framing shutters on the encoder, which I'm probably going to control visually by just dragging them in and out. On page two, it gives me things like pan, tilt, uh, focus and zoom on the encoders, all the kind of stuff that I'm going to want as I'm controlling uh, the attributes or the framing shutters of these uh, fixtures. Um, there's a blade offset feature, so if I was to grab, say, blade 2 and put it in this position here, uh, I've selected blade 2 here. If I hit shift, you can see we'll shift all my blades around 90 degrees here, so it allows me to do a blade offset. Um, I can do a quick zero blade here, and I can do things like multi-blade mirror, so I can mirror uh, the pairs together, uh, like so. Uh, or I can go uh, all blades all together and grab all four blades here for a nice tight uh, square uh, type focus here. If I come out of multi-blades, uh, we've got things like to zoom in on the window, which is particularly not useful if you turn on the controls up at the top here. You can see my top soft button here is controls none at the moment. If I press that once, it gives me arrows to control to bring each blade in and out and swivel each blade. Um, or I can have my four points a little bit like keystoning here. Um, as I say, this will work with any uh, moving light fixture that has, or any fixture that actually has framing blades that can be controlled via DMX in there. We've, we've given our library extensive updates to make sure this is working. If you find any issue with it, please do contact our support team. We'll be happy to look out uh, this for you. Um, another new feature we've added in our 197 stable is something called linked groups. Um, so if I take my spots up here, you can see I've made a couple of groups here uh, called spots odds, spots even, and you can see it now says L in the corner here. All I did was I started by selecting the main group. Uh, if I actually remove these two groups here, I'll delete them and remove that one as well. 
uh, if I grab my spots here and I press say odd even, you can see in the viz it's now got the odds and the evens uh, and I record a group. Uh, you can see it now says 5L because there's 10 heads in here. I've got the odds. It's called it spots odds. It's linked back to this group. Five fixed is linked to another group. If I press next head, it's going to give me the evens. If I record a group here, uh, you can see it's now called that group evens and it's even labeled up for me and it's told me there's five heads linked. Uh, something else new uh, that's in our 197 release is something called chunks. If you press and hold your odd even button, you get your odd even toolbar. This isn't new. You've had an odd, odd even toolbar for a little while. Uh, but there's a new selection in here. You had parts and segments before, you had things like pairs, but chunks is a new selection. Uh, what chunks is doing is allowing me to split. It's a different style of segments. So if I'm in two chunks, you can see I've got 10 lights in my group. These two lights aren't actually in that group at the moment. I will put them in in a moment. Uh, but I've got 10 lights, they're highlighted here. And you can see when I split into two chunks, I've got the first five uh, as one chunk and the second five would be my second chunk there. If I go and record a group of that, it's gonna call it chunk one. And if I hit next head, you can see the next five are highlighted and go and record that. You can see it will call it chunk two. Uh, I can do things like have multiple chunks. So if I go chunks and I said into threes, you can see I've now got, if I use my next head, uh, chunks of three. So take my current selection and split it into threes. Um, now, if I clear the programmer here, um, you can see it tells me how many heads are in each. So I've done uh, two chunks and odds and evens, so different selections, uh, but based on there being 10 heads in the master group. Uh, now, if I was to change the number of heads in that group, my linked groups would automatically update. And of course, yes, this does work with group queues. These are full groups here. They're just linked back to a master group. Uh, my spots, if I wanted all uh, 12 of them, uh, it's going to be uh, 101 uh, through 112 at at and select them you can now see i've selected all 12 and if i go and re-record that group all spots in there yes uh, you can see my link groups have updated there's now six heads in each if i go and select them you can see odds evens chunk one chunk two it's recalculated based on the order of heads in this master group so i added two heads in say it was here and here it worked out that it was chunks of two so it needed to work out the first six heads and the second six and the odds evens exactly the same so it's all based on the selection order of heads within the group there uh, so that's two features there you've got link groups and also chunks uh, now with chunks as well yes it gives me a quick way of sub selecting but we've added that for effect as well so if i take my spots and i said add effect intensity and i just drop a basic dimmer uh, chase on those uh, let's just locate first so they're all at the same point and then i'll set intensity to zero there we go uh, and I'm going to take the width down to say, uh, yeah, 28% or so there. Um, if I take segments all the way up now, you can see it turns into chunks and then parts becomes my modifier for the number of chunks. So if I then said in three chunks, you can see there, it's essentially if I speed this effect up, uh, an effect of three chunks, you can see exactly that. It's respecting there in three splits there, a uh, different way of segmenting. Now, uh, this is a group based effect based on uh, group four. If I go and record that as a queue here and I run the queue, you can see it run back in my three chunks. It's a group based effect um, based on three chunks. So if I come back to the view heads window here and I modify what's in the group. So I'm going to take out head the first head. I'm going to take out uh, head 106 and I'm also going to take out then 108. So I've taken out three kind of random heads within here and I now go back and re record this group. My effect is going to update, but also because it's using chunks, it knows the selection there. It knows that I've got, now I've got nine heads in here and chunks are three. It needs to be the first three, second three, and third three. So it's completely updated. I haven't just got you know, heads in different random orders. It respects my chunks um, even when I change the selection order there. Uh, also in our 197 release is full support for our Magic Cube Compact Wing. We previewed this uh, back in the last year at LDI. Uh, 197 now has full support for the compact wing in here. Uh, things like color tags displaying on the screen here. Um, you'll see if I go to my setup window and I go to view system uh, and I go to wings here, we have a new type for compact wings. So if you do have uh, a compact wing, which is shipping imminently, uh, when you plug it in, you win on your console. And these are supported on PC systems, our current compact consoles and our stadium consoles. You can connect them into as well. Uh, you will need to change the next available wing uh, from playback extra to compact wing uh, like so and then you'll be able to connect your compact wing get it working with the system uh, we've also added our latest genetics firmware into the 197 release support for uh, products like our brand new gn8 which is our uh, simple 
uh, installation node. It's our uh, DMX output only node, joins the genetics range of products, very um, competitive in its pricing. Uh, obviously it sits in, uh, with our current uh, node range where we've got the GN2, 5, 10, GW wall plates, GN4 IP, etc. there, and all the genetics products there. Um, so that's an overview of some of the core features in our new 197 release. And as I say, there's many, many other new features. Do take a look at the change notes and download it now from the Campus website.